You know, Watkins worked his way into the position that he's in right now to be the second receiver on this team. Jay Jaw was given it and he just didn't know what to do with it. Jalen Rager was given it and still didn't know what to do with it because they didn't really have to work for it. Guys like that work for it. Greg Ward Jr. work for it. When you're when you're in a position where you're making a team every year, as opposed to being given to you, you're gonna work a little harder. And that might be the biggest thing, man. That's a that's a true reality that I really didn't think of. That he was just giving it to it and he didn't have oh, to yeah. work for it. So he doesn't know how to be that receiver. Welcome back to the middle. Big Seals in for Harry Mays. And my wife says this all the time. Anybody who plays 10 plus years in the NFL is an instant Hall of Famer to her. So <laughs> my, my, my guy here, Jared Brooks in here. Yeah, my, my wife, uh, when I told her that Ed Jones played like 19 years, she goes, <laughs> he played 19 years? I said, man, I go, I, I'm going to tell you, man, he is one of my favorite people I've ever seen. And when you get Next to a guy like that, Barrett, you just follow his routine. He used to come in 135, get his ankles taped, go lotion up, get himself all ready, put the bank gay on, have his pads on at 245, getting ready. Everything was meticulous, man. Yep, it was yep. the same thing. And I tell young guys this all the time. Find a 10-year vet in the locker room. Watch what that guy does. You want to know how to be a pro? And I tell people this, one of my biggest failures was thinking that I knew and I didn't know crap when I got to the league. You need to be like Teflon and just go to those guys. Do the Eagles have enough guys in that locker room for all the new players that they've brought in to really go through this journey? Because as you know, Barrett, having success and then learning to play with success and expectations, they saw a little bit of that last week, didn't they, against the Saints where – they let that team back in because they didn't really know how to step on the gas pedal, stay on the gas pedal and finish him off. And that game got kind of interesting a little bit in the beginning of the fourth quarter. Is there enough leadership on that team to get them through the finish line here? No, I, I, no, I, I, I don't think that there is, um, especially in the wide receiver room. I think they need that veteran player to really show them what it is to be a wide receiver. Cause I think they like, even though Smith came in a lot polished than most wide receivers, they don't really have the, a, a sense of how to really run routes the way I've seen pros do it. And I played with, you know, Irvin Fryer. It's somewhat a guy that does things the right way. He did things the right way. Cause I caught him later in his career after he had left Miami and talking about a consummate pro, he'd come in early, he'd lift early. He, 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 you know, just like you said, he'd go in the treatment room. You know, he'd smell just like Ben Gay for, you know, an hour before he even go out to, you know, practice. He would do the little things. He would eat the right things, you know. I had guys like that, you know, they helped me out. That's why I played 12 years because I had a guy like Guy McIntyre who played left guard and, and Riley McKenzie who played center. He was one of the original hogs for Washington. Guy McIntyre played in all those Super Bowls that the 49ers played in, you know. I had guys like that. They come in, and I can remember I used to have to, you know, as a rookie, I had to buy, you know, everybody's sandwiches and everything. <laughs> and so I had to go get cheesesteak sandwiches, breakfast cheesesteaks, all that stuff uh, from in the morning. And and guys like Guy Mack, who'd been in the league like ten years, and Riley McKenzie had been in the league like ten years, they didn't want they didn't want cheesesteaks. I had to get them fresh fruit, maybe a bagel here and there, because they were taking care of their bodies. They go in, they do the little things, get in a sauna, you know. And, and they don't have that necessarily at key positions, like the wide receiver room, where they're the youngest out of anybody. You can't tell me that, you know, at this point, you have a guy that, in, in that locker room who knows how to really run routes. Like little things that I know about watching, because I, I worked in NFL films for, for five or six years. And I learned from guys, you know, that they brought in how you do it. You know, just like when you're, when you're a wide receiver and you're running a route. And you're looking at the DB, you look him square in his eyes when you run out. So if you run full speed at him and you keep your eyes on him, he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what route you're going to run or what way you're going to go. Or like if you're running a route and you kind of lean into him a little bit, and once you lean into him, you come off your break, and that creates separation. They don't have a guy to really teach him that. You know, Greg Ward Jr. is the elder statesman in there, and he doesn't know. He just really started playing the wide receiver position. So they need that guy to come in and be – you know, a, a, a voice for them to, to, to have them learn. You know, yeah, we know Nick Sariana is a, a wide receiver coach. 
But is he there to really show them and teach them how to run routes and they could see it every day? Say what you want to say. You need to have somebody in there that can really help you and, and teach you to learn routes, give you little hints on what you need to do. And those little things will start, you know, becoming big plays if they really know how to do it. I think I don't think Jalen Rager knows how to be a receiver yet. I don't think he knows how to be a return man. He's yet. awful at coming back to the ball, fighting yep. for it. I mean, he's he to me, you know what it is, Barrett? When I watch him play, it just looks to me like he doesn't work hard enough at the position where ah, da, da. I need yes, hitting off right. the line of scrimmage. If if they play man on him and they jam him at the line of scrimmage, he's out. He's out, man. Yep. And th- look, when you got a first rounder taking punt returns and kickoff returns, you know he's a bust. <laughs> Everyone on that sideline goes like this. It's 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 like when you draft a left tackle out of college, right? And all of a sudden he's playing right guard. You're right. going like this. <laughs> okay, well, we didn't draft him for that. Okay. That's not what we drafted that guy for, man. He's right. playing right guard. You're like this. Hey, man, I don't know, man. I mean, and and, and believe me, what I'm telling I I just I'm, I watch him. I'm like, this kid Watkins, he fights, he yep. wants to be there. He's an over-the-top kind of guy that can knock a cover off a of defense. I mean, well, that's because he had guys- to work for it. He wasn't given anything. Big Seal, that's exactly right, man, because he had to earn it the hard way. He wasn't even supposed to be on this roster. They had a guy that they drafted in front of him that they were going to play him, but he he worked his way into position to be on the field. Like Jay Jaw, you know, um, he was given the position and, and and lost it to a guy that, you know, shouldn't even been on the team. You know, Watkins – Worked his way into the position he's in right now to be the second receiver on this team. Jay Jaw was given it and he just didn't know what to do with it. Jalen Rager was given it and still didn't know what to do with it because they didn't really have to work for it. Guys like that work for it. Greg Ward Jr. worked for it. When you're when you're in a position where you're making a team every year, as opposed to being given to you, you're gonna work a little harder. And that might be the biggest thing, man. That's a that's a true reality that I really didn't think of. That he was just giving it to it and he didn't have oh, to yeah. work for it. So he doesn't know how to be that receiver. This is what I tell people, and I've had this conversation with Larry Allen before. So Larry Allen was a 12th round draft choice at a Humboldt State in California somewhere that no one ever heard of. And this guy turned out to be, in my opinion, I I don't know what your opinion is of him, but I think he's the greatest offensive lineman I have ever seen. And a 700-pound bencher, when that guy gets his hands on you, it is freaking awesome. Over, he, he makes was, you disappear from the screen, <laughs> dude. He and by the way, he's right. He's a sun blocker too, man. That dude stands in front of you. You're like, holy shit, that guy is amazing <laughs> looking, and he can play. And you know what he said, man? He goes, you know, they drafted guys ahead of me. They had guys that were, you know, second and third rounders. Those guys were all going to get the reps. Every rep that I had to have had the matter for me to be able right. to turn the heads because. But that's also something that's built into the process, isn't it, Barrett? That when every rep matters, see, when you're Rieger and you're a first rounder, you drop the ball, you run a crappy route, hey, you know what, I'll get another rep. When you're one of those guys like Watkins that doesn't have that very many reps and don't have those opportunities, you got to be meticulous in every single thing that you do. They have that mentality in New England. Whether you're a seventh rounder or whether you're a first rounder, Every rep matters because you're evaluated. I in the sky doesn't lie. We were always told that, you know. Yep. I mean, exactly. You always there's performing. always something about those guys that were taking three and down. You know what I mean? Yep. That worked hard. Yep. That really wanted to make a roster. Well, you know what? And me, me, I I had to play with a chip on my shoulder because they drafted me to be a the starting left guard, but I ended up playing left tackle because Bernard Williams couldn't stop smoking weed. So I went from being I played tackle in college. I went from being the starting right guard, I mean, a left guard, and they moved me to tackle. And I trained to be the left tackle the entire time. I mean, left guard the entire time. Then they moved me back to tackle. So I always felt as though I was behind the buck. And they tried to replace me every single year I was there. So I started my rookie year. The next year they draft, um, they draft, uh, 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 what was his name, Jermaine Mayberry to take my position. I fight him off, start left tackle. The next year they come in, they bring in Steve Wallace. I fought off Steve Wallace. It wasn't until they brought in Big Trey. Trey came in and, and took all that. You know, another, you know what I'm saying? another legendary player, <laughs> right, man. Right, exactly. They, Big Trey came in, you know, and it was like, hey, from that point on, he was a star left tackle. So I went up there. I beat out the, the, the starting right tackle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I couldn't beat out Big Trey, but I went out and, and I started a right tackle. 
I always had to fight for it. And, 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 and I started six years of my career. In my last six, I rode the bench. You know, I was the sixth man off the bench. But I never, I never felt as though I had the entitlement of not working hard. Never. Even at a second round pick, I was always fighting to get ahead, man. And, and that's that's the reason why I played as long as I played, because I didn't have the luxury of just sitting back. All right, I know I'll get another rep. I didn't have that luxury. Man, I was just, always fighting in training camp trying to make the squad, bro. <laughs> I tell people this all the time. Only 29,000 men have ever played in the National Football League from 1920. Wow. And there's only 16,000 of us alive today. And for you to play 10 plus years, bro, that is freaking unbelievable. And I tell everybody, you play, you practice a thousand hours to play one game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just remember that you, you practice a thousand hours to play one game. You mentioned Jonathan Gannon. Let's get over on that side of the ball. Um, what's your take on him first from an offensive perspective? I'll give you mine as a defensive guy. You know, from an offensive perspective, I don't think he called, he calls a, a, a game in which he's dictating tempo. Hmm. You know, you have to dictate tempo when you're a defense. That's what, you know, you know, you, you can't be, behind the buck all the time. And I feel, it feel as though, you know, for the first first six, seven games, he was behind the buck because he was he was playing a play behind the offense. And he did, you know, you you, you got to initiate what you want him to do. You know, you have to initiate how you want the game to be played because if you have your players playing passive, if you're thinking passive and you're calling a passive game, the players take on your identity. So now they're playing passive. They're playing not to get beat instead of going out there and playing to dominate. You can't play to get beat. You have to play to dominate. And when you have guys that can dominate and the personnel packages that he has, he can definitely play dominant. He has three cornerbacks that can play bump and run. He has three cornerbacks that I feel as though they can line up against any receiver in the league and have some success. But he also has some guys up front that could rush the passer if you give them that opportunity. If you play him, you know, eight yards back, it doesn't matter what defensive line you have out there. They're not going to have no time when the team just goes out and throws out routes or stop routes because the ball's on the fast, and that's seven yards. And and, and, and and no matter how much um, blitzing you do or, or pass rushing you do, you can't get there. If you just, you know, quarterback just said one, two, boom, the ball's out of his hands, you can't get there fast enough. He has to call a more aggressive game. Once he plays a more aggressive game and use the personnel that he has, he could be a pretty good – uh, decent coordinator, but he talked the talk when he was, you know, when we first got here. Oh, I'm gonna have you know multiple sets. I'm gonna dictate tempo. I'm gonna be very, very aggressive. And he didn't do any of that for the first seven, eight weeks. Now he's starting to do it, and it's starting to reap the benefits of it. You know, uh, here, here's 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 how I look at this thing with him. I saw at the beginning of the season just way too much catching and reaching. Okay, yes. and that goes kind of what you were saying because it was too complex in the fact that. You heard Fletcher even complaining about, I'm not a freaking two-gapper. I'm a guy that's a one-gap technique guy that's going to dominate one side of the ball here, and I'm going to get in the backfield and create havoc. Da, da, da. Yep. Kills offensive linemen. You want, you, I, I, I'll tell you a great trick that Jerry Ball and Michael Carter and all those guys used to do. Barrett knows this. When a guy's lined up on me and I'm saying I'm on a three technique and he's trying to reach me and then scoop up on the linebacker, he gets his head front side. That's the perfect block for him. But you know what I would do with what Jerome Brown and I used to do? Was we used to let him do that, run around the block, make the tackle behind, and all of a sudden I got Barrett going like this. Man, this mother's going to just come behind me now. He ain't playing <laughs> technique. So it's going to put him on his heels when you put an offensive lineman going, well, he ain't trying to get front side. He's just trying to get penetration on me. That slows that reach and scoop down a little bit on yep. you. When you're telling these guys, you got to be in a three technique, a one technique and a seven technique, or some of these crazy now nine techniques that they have with those wide ends. Now you're sitting there going like this to the guy. Okay. Well, he's going to run around a block. If I go too flat in my step, he's going to come around that block and make that play come off my backside. And that center's not going to be able to scoop up on me. Ain't it disguises Barrett. I mean, at the beginning of the year, they were so predictable. I'm sitting there watching the game with my wife. I'm going like, dude, this guy's just going to play zone coverage like this and not have, right. that, <laughs> not have that Baltimore walk up. You know what I love what the Ravens used to do with Ed and um and Ray? They would sit there in a group right there before the um the, the snap of the ball. Then they would spread out to their um to their assignments and they would move around all the time because you know the quarterback is trying to identify the strong or the free safety. 
He's trying to find that cover two linebacker. And you're sitting here going like this. And then all of a sudden, right at that five-second mark when he sets the O-line, these guys moved. There was none of that. It was so predictable. I think what they started the last- off in, yeah, what they start off in, they stayed in. That's yeah, too and, easy to block. And, and, and I was sitting here going, bro, you can't do that. You do that shit in college. You can't do that in the pros. These guys are too smart. It becomes predictable. I think over the last couple weeks, we're starting to see more penetration. I, I couldn't believe what I was watching last week. They were blitzing on the Saints. Yeah. I saw more guys coming in. Um, you see that on the outside? They blitz on it. Looked like they were going to blitz on the outside. And yeah. then they dropped off the snap of ball. And that's when um, uh, 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 they, they, they blitz Singleton right up the middle. I'm like, that's exactly what you do. And I played against that Sarah Goosa, uh, Ray Lewis. Man, that defense, they were so – and Ed Reed, those guys, they – they were so non-conventional. Like you said, they would sit there in the huddle. We get to the line, and as an offensive line, you're you're taught. All right, first you gotta find the mic. Once you find the mic linebacker, yeah. you can set your protection. And when you set your protection off the mic linebacker, you might not always have the mic. The running back might have the mic, but you gotta let him know where the mic is first, and then all the other positions, you know, unfold after that. Well, they be sitting there, and we're just sitting like, all right, waiting to find the mic. We're like, down, set, and we're like. When are they gonna do it? And all of a sudden, hut, they boom, they break out, and it's you, you, you don't know who to block. You had so much indecision. Well, when it, and early in the season, John again have the guys just sitting there. First of all, they'd be lined off eight yards off the ball, <laughs> and then they'd be sitting right there. So a guy like Tom Brady comes up, it just can't be this easy. I mean, if you're gonna give me seven yards, I ain't even gotta work for it. I'm gonna take it. And that's exactly what he was doing. Oops, there's seven. Oops. There's nine. Oh, there's and, – and and you just own your heels the entire time. And, and it impacted the run game. And, Barrett, I try telling people when you're catching and chasing, you're, you're, you're back like this. The offensive lineman is pushing you back, which means now you're in, you're in the scrape lane of the linebacker. You've moved the entire offensive line up at least two yards. So before the guy even gets the ball, the running back – this guy's got a two and a half yard head start. Right. Of course, you're going to be at four four yards of carry. You get four yards of carry, the game's over. Well, okay. yeah. Four yards of carry, you're third and short, and you're in a nightmare the entire game. And that's kind of what I saw. Do I think he's evolving? This is the one thing that I like about this coaching staff. You know, they saw all these deficiencies, Barrett, that they were doing at the beginning of the year. And as a player, I appreciate people listening. And changing. Yes. And they change. And for me, as a player, I'm in that locker room going, okay, well, they see the same shit we see on. on <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. We all see it. We all, we see, all it. see it. And, you know, you can't <laughs> hide. But you know this. How many times have you played for a coach, though, that tries to take that round peg and jam it into a square hole, and you're sitting there going, dude, this is not going to work, man. You don't play it's for them long. It's not going to work. You don't play for them long because they're out of there. You know, that's and that's exactly what happened to Chip Kelly. He thought that he can come in with this new innovation and keep running the same thing over and over again. Does he not understand that defensive coordinators get paid millions of dollars to stop this stuff? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're going to find a way to stop it. Can you evolve? And I think that's the best thing, you know, as far as what you see with uh, the defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator and, and you know, the head coach. Both, both guys, like on the offensive side of the ball, Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni are lifting as they're climbing. They're lifting each other up and they're yeah. climbing up together. You know, they're both going hand in hand. They're going up as the offense is evolving. Hurts is evolving because, again, it's a, um, because a Sirianna is evolving. And as they're evolving together, it's starting to work now. They're seeing what works, what doesn't work, what they can do, what they can't do. And that progression is, 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 is going hand in hand with the team. They're seeing it also. You know, he figured, he had to figure it out. All right, if I got to play, I, I got the personnel package that I can go play tighter on these guys. These guys are pretty good. At, at, at playing cornerback, well, let me use him a little bit. So he started doing that. Let's say, all right, then I got TJ Edwards sitting here. I got this guy Wilson. We paid all his money for. You know, it's supposed to be a, a great free agent acquisition. He literally sucks. So I'm not gonna play him anymore. So he he benched him and eventually cut him. And I was like, 
I'm glad that they did that because he had me fooled, man. Wilson had me fooled. He was talking about some, you know, when at the beginning of the year, oh, man, I did everything. You know, I'm taking taekwondo and ninjutsu and all this stuff. You know, I'm Great. I'm not eating meat you anymore. Play? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on a vegetarian diet now. I don't, I don't eat anything but, you know, things from the earth. You know, bruh. Halfway about halfway, you know, through the first game, I'm like, look, he better go eat some meat or something, man, because he is just <laughs> not a tough guy, bro. He is. Not, I'm like, damn, why did they let Wilson go, man? He played pretty well at um, Minnesota. Minnesota saw it. They saw it. They were like, no, nah, we got to get him out of here. And he was like, he was like one of the worst linebackers I've seen play. He had no aggressiveness, no, you know, nature as far as being somebody's going to initiate contact. It was, it was horrible, man. It was horrible for a little bit. Let, let me let me say this, man. I tell people this all the time when you play defense. Defense is an attitude. It's it's not a position. Right. You, you got you, – hey, remember this. It's four against five, man. So you got to be willing right. to get in there with them big horses in there. You know, they, they got rid of – 